Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dan, welcome back to Dan Overboard. And if you are new to this channel, I am someone who as of July 2022, will be working on my first cruise ship. It'll be my first cruise, it'll be my first time working on a cruise ship. And today we're gonna to talk about marine medical examination. If you are someone who is planning to work on a cruise ship, you may already know that you have to do a medical check before that. And it's not a medical check that can be done just by any doctor. It has to be uh, a certain certified or licensed doctor or practitioner that can carry out the marine medical examination. Now, in my area of Canada, there are quite a few doctors who can do this. My recruiter initially sent me uh, a link that would link me to a list of the doctors in my area. And as I did that search, I found three doctors total in Canada, which I was a little confused by. Uh, very much confused by because when I did the search the closest one to me was actually in Edmonton, Alberta which is about a few provinces over and give or take about a four-hour flight uh, from where I am. Uh, I started to figure if that was the only option then I would be willing to do that. I looked at flights, they weren't so expensive, I figured that I could even go there early morning, get the exam, come back all within a day. I started planning it out and I thought yeah that can work. The next closest one I think was in Vancouver, BC, which again, I would have considered doing that too, but flights to Vancouver were a lot more expensive and I don't think I could have made the one day turnaround. It would have had to have at least been a night. And even in that case, I probably would have made it at least a few nights because I have some great friends there. I think beyond that, I don't remember where the third one was, but then I started to think, maybe this isn't accurate. There's gotta be a closer doctor to me. So I emailed my recruiter, she emailed back quite quickly and apologized, reiterating, right, that I need to go to Transport Canada and not just the European ones that she had sent me. So I did another search and a whole bunch of them came up that were much closer to me. One of the closest was about a 45 minute drive and there were quite a few doctors in that area. So I decided to choose one and make the trip out. So I called them up, I booked my appointment and I set out to complete my marine medical examination. On the day, I drove out, got to the clinic, and was handed a form to fill out. Pretty basic information, just personal details, your address, things like that. Now the address you write on that form is probably one of the most important things about this medical examination. It is to me at least, and I'll get into that later in the video. After I've completed the form, the nurse takes me into a separate room. They take your weight, they take your height, you take them both, and there you have the facts of life. And there's also an eye test, one for each eye, of course, a standard urine test, and check your blood pressure. Then it was back into the waiting room for a short time while the doctor finishes up with another patient and then I went into another room so that I could meet the doctor. Now for me, I'll admit, my medical examination was quite hands-off, literally. Uh, it wasn't very thorough as some of the other ones I've heard and researched before. Mine was pretty straightforward, actually. It was more or less a question and answer period for a little bit. The doctor asked me if I was healthy, <laughs> for the most part, as far as I know. I said, yes. He briefly asked about my family history, both my mother and my father's side, if there was a history of medical concerns. Then he asked me if I had any previous operations, which I responded yes to. I actually had surgery on my left foot due to a biking accident in 2017, March of 2017. And then before then, I hadn't really had any serious operations uh, since I was a child. Those were irrelevant to the doctor. I think he was looking for something more, more immediate and more case sensitive. He then asked me straightforward if I do any illegal drugs, if I drink alcohol, and if I'm sexually active. Actually, he didn't ask that question. He must have known. Then I sat on the patient's bed to have my breathing checked. He used a stethoscope. He used a stethoscope. Using a stethoscope, he checked my breathing and then also did a reflex test. A quick throat inspection, round of high fives, and I was out the door. Pretty simple, right? Is this similar to your experience or your expectation? Let me know in the comments what you're thinking. Now, the process and the thoroughness of the examination may have different mileage for you, and it may change depending on many factors. Perhaps one's age, sex, country or region, the cruise line you may be working for or other mandates, and of course other factors as well. For Canadians, such as me, the most important part of this medical examination, more than just being healthy, is actually having what is called a CDN number. 
A CDN or a CDN number is a candidate document number allotted to a candidate by Transport Canada Marine Safety or TCMS. All your training and qualification records are maintained in the TCMS computer database, ACES or ACES, under your CDN number. A CDN number is acquired through Transport Canada and is necessary to complete the medical marine examination. At the time of my examination, I did not yet have a CDN number. Some doctors like mine will complete your examination without a CDN number. However, they will only issue you a temporary form that you can use in the meantime to offer to your recruiter that shows that you have completed the examination and passed it. However, it is not an official document just yet, not without the CDN number. My doctor allowed me to complete the examination and follow up when I did actually obtain the CDN number. It took about a day, give or take. After my medical check, I went home and I started to call a few places such as Transport Canada and got rerouted to the actual place that I was meant to speak with who did give me the proper information. For me, the process was to set up an account through Canada Post. Now I know that seems a little odd, but it's true. So basically, Transport Canada sends me an email link that lists the things that I need to send within Canada Post online. It's just a digital form. They wanted a scan of my passport, then a scan of my health card, and a scan of another official Canadian ID. You actually only need two of them. I sent all three just in case, which was a scan of my passport, a scan of my driver's license, and a scan of my health card. From there, they verify the documents as accurate and then email me back a CDN number. And upon acquiring mine, I called my doctor with that information, who then, they entered the information on the form, and I entered the information on the temporary form that I had, and they send their version to Transport Canada for verification. I took a photo of my form completed with the CDN number and sent that to my recruiter as proof that I had passed the examination. Once accepted on Transport Canada's end, this is where what I said before of the address that you put on the form is extremely important. Why? Because that form has to be sent back to you. The official document gets sent back to you on whatever address you put. However, the form might not be sent back to you in a timely fashion. It could take months, and at that point you may have moved and or be on board at the time that they send it out. Obviously, they can't send it to a port. Well, they could. You would just have to indicate that address and be able to pick it up at whatever mailbox you happen to be visiting at that time. But it's better to use a permanent address or an address where you know that the form will go and that you can retrieve at a certain time. I did not put the address that I currently live because I won't be living here in a couple months. I'll be on the ship already. Now, whether my form actually gets to me before I board the ship or after, at least it will go to a permanent address that I know I can retrieve either way and or be in good hands for when I need it. If you're able to obtain your official pass document before you travel, bring it on board and your employer might request it. Of course, apart from the medical examination, you will need to do a few other things before you get on board, such as a criminal record check. This is of course not related to the medical examination and they don't feed off each other. They are completely separate, but you will still need both of them. For my criminal record check, my employer sent me basic information, which I filled out a form, and then also sent my credit card information so that they can charge me to actually perform the credit check themselves. Thankfully, I didn't have to do it myself. I simply gave them the information. They had their own process for doing it. And literally, within about a half an hour, it was sent back as cleared. That's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. Let me know in the comments what you're thinking, if you had similar experiences or very different expectations than I had. Have a great day and I'll see you overboard.